I, I went to school in, um, uh, at Carnegie Mellon to get a BS in statistics. Went to grad school at University of Wisconsin. Um, and sometime after that, when I was working, um, I, I, you know, I wanted to do something fun. And I thought Kaggle was something that really interested me because it combined this both competitive and collaborative atmosphere with also um, uh, using statistics and you know computer science and and um, understanding technology and I thought okay well, let me take take a take a stab at this uh, I, I took I went in my first competition I just ran a random forest and um, uh, just luckily at that time I got I think I got like top 25 percent or something like that and I was felt really good about it I think it was like maybe like about a year after Kaggle launched. Yeah, I think it was uh, about fi C, Click, Fix, the, th the three, yeah. It might have even been um, San Francisco, right? So, or the Bay Area. Um, so it was one of the early competitions. You guys had a hackathon there, and I, I took the one after the hackathon, which was um, just a normal Kaggle event. Um, and then I think one after or two after I did, got a top 10, um, uh, uh, single gold and, and, and kind of moved on from there. Oh, so far there's, there's so many. Um, I think I've done over like over 100 maybe, so it's hard to pick. Um, I'm going to try to think. Uh, one of the most interesting, I actually don't remember what the competition was, but I remember it was the first competition I used stacking very heavily in. And I stack, you know, all sites, all types of uh, models, including like neural networks, GBMs, random forests, um, and so forth. And it turned out pretty well. And I, I got a top 10 or top um, eight or whatever, some, some good position in it. And I, I don't actually remember what it was, but I remember. Yeah, massive compute, massive ensembling, and, and um, yeah, that was the first one I, I really got into that. It's, it's funny because um, I do remember single competitions, but I don't re really remember too much about what it was about. I just remember, oh, this was the metric, this was sort of what the sponsor was, and this was, you know, this is what I had to maximize, was it a binary prediction or regression or so forth, so. Well, I think you need both to do, like, if you really want to win, you can get both. In the cases, um, uh, you need both because they can help you um, figure out things that your algorithms can't figure out, like features that wouldn't necessarily ever be found um, by, uh, even by a, a, a neural net. So sometimes that, that could um, play, play a role, especially if you have if you're trying to combine like multiple resources like um, images, text, uh, tabular data, there's competitions that combine all of those things. So maybe a, a domain expert would be quite useful um, in a competition where you have multiple different types of data and then you have some kind of time series component. And I think in those t types of ambiguous cases, um, currently machine are not as, as good, and I don't expect that to continue, but at least at this time, the ambiguity and then the fact that you have you know, both text and maybe even images and, and movies and all of this stuff makes it very difficult. Well, I, I don't think I've ever had like a worse experience, but uh, I, I don't get to Kaggle as much as I'd like, and I think that's kind of like the bad experience is you have to choose um, depending on your responsibilities and your time commitment and so forth, you may want to Kaggle more, but um, you know it doesn't work out in your favor. Uh, but I think kernels let me, you know, right now as kernels get better and better and maybe even more suited to mobile, if kernels would work really well on mobile, then you can Kaggle anywhere. So you can Kaggle on your phone, on the ferry, on the bus, on the BART. You can be Kaggling anywhere you have internet access. And I think kind of that's the future is, is to really elevate kernels and the mobile 
user experience and the laptop user experience to have really stable caggling wherever you go. I guess that's difficult because the dependencies of those packages, I think uh, right now if you get Keras with a TensorFlow backend, you get, I guess, TensorFlow. Um, if you get TensorFlow with GPU, I think you have to install Pandas for some reason. Keras, Keras with TensorFlow and, and everything would, hopefully that would already install Pandas and, and so forth. Um, that's one of the biggest packages uh, that I would use. Uh, it's great for neural nets, it's great for um, sampling things using nets, and um, also with uh, things like you know, CNNs and, and um, um, uh, those type of things. I would also use uh, LightGBM. I think it's quite fast, and um, in terms of having that one GBM, that um, LightGBM is pretty good. I would take it over XGBoost just to prevent I don't want to put two G GBMs in there. Um, now, since I'm assuming I already have uh, have pandas, um, and I'm assuming that also implies I have NumPy, uh, it's very difficult to think. It's actually very difficult to think of another one. Um, hmm. I use pandas a lot, um, and that helps with the, the data manipulation. Yeah, I think one of the strongest techniques is uh, value counts. So looking at the, the counts of both when you combine your train and test of a, of a feature um, or even just train or just test or train plus partial test, um, it's, it seems to encode something that GBMs can't usually see, uh, which is the frequency of an observation and sometimes it even works for uh, floats if you have enough data and it can kind of give you this uh, understanding of how frequent a data is and, and that frequency can help you make better predictions. Um, so that, that's like one thing that I've used repeatedly and, and I think is a, is a hack that's well known in the Kaggle community that now was less, it was less used in the past but now is um, being used uh, in you know, every single kernel. Um, and kind of like the, the follow-up that would probably be like mean encoding or target encoding. Um, so different ways of in encoding, uh, um, I guess, typically categoricals. It's really important to go out to events like this, even though, uh, uh, like, when you go to these events, you might be learn new, new things and new people, and um, you might learn things that you can't you know, learn online or in a book. So I think uh, events like this uh, help bring people together and uh, you may encounter old friends or, or new, new ones and uh, they may tell you things uh, you know, both about you know, Kaggle or, or machine learning or data science or, or professionally that uh, you wouldn't have um, uh, known without coming here. I think today is a, a great day. I get, get to mentor the, the attendees, and I think they're hopefully going to um, uh, learn a lot, have fun, and uh, beat AutoML. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on camera, so. You definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, that doesn't get me blacklisted from, from all future Google events. Um,